another episode of Good Day God. Today we are going to go over our identity in Christ. The Bible especially talks about guarding our heart as everything flows out of it. The book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flow from it. And it also reminds us to captive every thought in our mind so we don't fall for the devil trap. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. We demolish argument and every pretension that set itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And this is why it is important to know our true identity in Christ, so we can combat this lie by devil that try to put it into our thought. Book of Edition, chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. So that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power to gather with all the Lord holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpass knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. It is important to understand the identity in Christ to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to understand how much we are loved, we need to go back to the story of the creation. Many people may start to talk about the creation with the fall of man, but we have to go back how we were created. Book of Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast prayed all things, and for thy pleasure they are and are were created. We are praying for God to love us. Book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 7, 27. Then God says, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the bird in the sky, over the livestock and all wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. We are created in his image. Our default relationship with God is not condemnation. We already have a relationship with God when we were made, just that the relationship was broken because of sin. And our Father, already has the redemption plan in his mind before the world was formed so that our relationship with him will get restored and god declared the victory already way back in the story of eden book of genesis chapter 3 verse 14 to 15. so the lord god said to the serpent because you have done this cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals you will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the day of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will destroy his heel. And this is why 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born and crucified. Three days later, resurrected and sitting on his heavenly throne. Book of John chapter 3 verse 17 For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus has not come to condemn us, but to save us. He will know he will know one he perished, but beside everyone repentant. Look at Book of Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, 
not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But that is for consequence if we don't believe in Jesus. Book of John, chapter 12, verse 47 to 48. If anyone hear my word but does not keep them, I did not judge that person, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. That is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my word. The very word I have spoken will condemn them at the last day. Book of Hosea, chapter 7, verse 14. Woe to them because they have strayed from me. Destruction to them because they have rebelled against me. I long to redeem them, but they speak about me falsely. Yes, before we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are indeed under the wrath of God because God is holy. But we have to be very clear about this in Scripture. The original design in creation is for God to enjoy us as He expressed His love for us. We are created in His image, and each was given many gifts and talents. Nothing can change his love for us, not our good deed or bad deed. For our God is an unchanging God. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendant of Jacob, are not destroyed. And there is no condemnation for those who love him. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if God is not condemning us, who has been always lying to us and made us feel God is not happy with us? Well, the, 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 the devil is the one who condemns. Book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brother and sister, who accused them before our God, day and night, has been hurled down. God is pleased with us before we do anything for him. The very same way he is pleased with Jesus before his ministry starts. Book of Luke, chapter 3, verse 22. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily from form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, say, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Yes, we are weak in flesh, but we desire to do good. Book of Romans. Chapter 7, verse 19. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. And that's why we need Jesus to become our Lord and Savior, because in Him there is hope and strength, for He has already overcome the world. Book of John, chapter 16, verse 33. I have told you this thing so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And we can overcome the world because he overcome the grave. Book of 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. For everyone born of God overcome the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who overcome the world? That looks at First John, chapter five, verse five. Who is it that overcome the world? Only the one who believed that Jesus is the Son of God. So please, please do not forget our identity in Christ. Book of Ephesians, chapter two, verse ten. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good work which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. We are not our sin. We are children of God, period. No if or else. No matter
matter how far or how close we feel, how sinful or how we are not sinful, it will not change our identity in Christ and the fact that God is unchanging. Book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendant of Jacob, are not destroyed. He won't love you more or less because of anything we do, both good and bad deeds. God will no one to perish. Book of 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. He come to save and not condemn. He has come to save us and not to condemn us. Book of John chapter 3 verse 17 For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world for him. And because of Christ, we are free from the bondage of sin. Book of Romans chapter 8 verse 2 because through Christ Jesus, the Lord of the Spirit, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. So please, please cherish this gift. Book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You might ask now, since our flesh is weak, how do we do that? Well, don't forget God sent us an advocate, the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit ministered to us when we looked at the Word of God, He can help us to overcome our sin. Look at Book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 5. And hope does not put us to shame, because God love has been poured out into our heart through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Book of John, chapter 14, verse 26. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I said to you. Book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 22. But now that you have set, but now that you have been set free from sin and have become slave of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. We are definitely not our sin. We are children of God. And let's close with this scripture. Book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. For we are his workmanship, curated in Christ Jesus for good work, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Praise God for this work. And until next time, we will see you.